This video is brought to you by the Disc Golf Nerd Patreon support team. Go to patreon.com slash disc golf nerd. What's up everybody? I'm the Disc Golf Nerd. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at my top three discs of 2022 that I reviewed here on the channel. Now I have six different discs here, so I have a couple of honorable mentions and then my top three as well. These are just my personal picks. Also, bear in mind, I didn't quite review as much plastic as I'd want to last year. I feel like I say that every year because I'm always have these grand plans to review a ton of stuff and between weather and scheduling and all the other things that happen and all the other content that I make and try to fit into the mix there. I focused a little more on like unboxing mail call type videos last year. So I took in a ton of stuff. The list might be a little different if it was all the discs I tested last year because I have a bunch of footage that I have not yet compiled into full reviews. Um, and that sort of thing. So bear in mind, nothing comprehensive, just three discs that stand out to me out of all the ones that I reviewed last year. If you like the channel, you like the videos, the disc reviews, the bag reviews, etc., please hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for future uploads. You can support me by signing up to my Patreon support team, or there's other support links in the description below for Upper Park Disc Golf and NSH Custom Discs, my two main sponsors this year and all that kind of good stuff. We're actually in limbo in terms of the disc reviews because the next one I post will be number 300 here on the channel. So I have a specific particular disc I picked up for that purpose to be number 300. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, get that done as soon as I can. It's been really windy and rainy and wet here in Oregon. So it's always a little bit tricky to get it all uh, taken care of, especially in the winter and the spring. So it is what it is. Okay, let's move on. Without further ado, we're going to put a few of these aside. I'm going to talk about my three honorable mentions. First one was Latitude 64 Grace. This is a great disc, really high quality disc. Uh, great flyer that a lot of people like. I don't know why they've been like out of stock for, well, seems like the whole year. I, I had a few of these to test and review that DD was kind enough to send me. So thank you very much to them. And uh, really great disc, 11 speed, 11, six, negative one and two are the flight numbers on this disc. And I'd say it flies pretty true to those numbers. It's pretty stable, but it has a little bit of turn allowing it to hold pretty straight up to speed and then swing in with some fade. So the Grace is a great disc and might have made my top three if they were more available for more people to uh, be able to use them. I'm hoping and I'm assuming that will change here in, uh, in 2023. If they're not working diligently to get more Graces on the market, I'm not sure what they're doing. It's not like they don't know. The demand for them because i believe it was their best-selling disc uh when they when they dropped it so another one that would probably be in the top three if it wasn't a disc i had already reviewed years ago uh is the phenom this one's been in the in the list for a while and it's not a new release uh, other than this particular colward allen shattered plastic version of the phenom but this is one that definitely stands out to us um, in terms of discs we tested and reviewed. I sent out a, a text to the group thread, my buddies, uh, Andy and Anthony and James, talking about some of the discs that stood out to us over the year. And the Phenom definitely was one of those. Uh, I had five of these. They were very consistent, really, really nice workhorse flyers that fly on a ton of different angles and just hold lines super well. Kind of like a all-around workhorse fairway disc that you can throw on almost any line. Um, and uh, just a very, very versatile disc that I think a lot of players could, could really enjoy. So that's the Phenom. I enjoyed that one very much. And final honorable mention for this particular year is the Luft Discs Borium. This one spent some time in my bag. It's an incredibly fast disc. You can see the prototype one back here on my wall. Um, and this one was in my bag for a while. It's a 167. has some ink on the bottom, but I'll give you a quick look at it. It has a rounded inside rim. Now, of course, full disc reviews are available for all these discs, so I don't need to go too far into the, you know, the particulars on the design and stuff, but this particular disc has a rounded inside rim that's supposed to reduce drag, allowing it to cut through the air with more speed. And I think it's pretty obvious when you actually do throw it that it cooks. It gets through, through the air very fast from point A to point B very quickly. Good disc to throw for long hyzers for me my arm speed also a good disc to flex uh, if i if i get it pulled over it'll generally work itself out and uh get good distance for sure especially considering how stable it is for my arm speed and if you are a big power player and you have a lot of arm speed and you're looking for something that's ultra fast that you can really smash and get out there with a lot of speed and distance great disc to get like underneath a ceiling too because you can allow the speed to punch under there and not have to rely on throwing it high enough for the glide to carry it down the fairway uh lift discs borium definitely an interesting disc to test and uh one that spent some time in my bag last year as well that's why i gave an honorable mention here 
Okay, the next three are my top three discs of the year. And we're going to start off with the Saki Bomb Slammer. I picked this one because obviously I'm a big Ricky fan. Also, I have bagged it over the course of the year at various times. I don't quite need it because I have other overstable approach discs, but it's definitely a great disc. One that might come out with me on certain courses, certain windy conditions could be a great disc as well. What I really like about this particular one is that it's got the board flat top that we all like for an overstable approach disc. It's got the thumb track, which is nice for, for forehand because your thumb will kind of sit on that thumb track. And it's got a great stability that's extremely consistent and easy to understand how it's going to behave. A few throws in and you know what, what this thing is going to do. And also it's like basically uh, controls distance on its own. So you can get out into a field with two of these or even if you just have one, throw it five to maybe ten times and you're going to get an idea of how far you can throw it. And then when you're out there on the course, you know, just throw this thing full bore. It's not going to go very far. It's going to go out there and it's going to dump towards the basket. So a very consistent, controllable disc that anybody can use. Don't feel like since it's an overstable disc, you can't use it if you're a beginner. Just know what it's for. Don't use it as your all-around disc. Don't throw, try to throw it on straight shots or shots you need to flip. Just understand what it's for. It's a short-range, overstable approach disc that you can flex. You can throw it forehand, backhand. Very effective. Saki Bomb Slammer. Definitely one of my favorite discs I reviewed last year. And um, is one of the discs that could make its way into my bag or out onto the course with me at any time. And I hold on to a few of them. I actually have the uh, Raptor Eye one here on my wall as well. Next, we have the Innova It. And this one is in DX plastic. I will be exploring these in other plastic types relatively soon. This one is just a really fun disc to throw. I just flat out enjoyed testing it and reviewing it because it's flippy, so it's very uh, fun to throw. There's a lot of different lines that it can fly down on a hyzer. It will flip up and roll over to the right all the way. It can flip up laser straight. You can put it on a ton of hyzer and punch it through a gap. Sometimes a hyzer flip is really nice to hit a gap because you can line up your whole shot, your whole shoulders and release right into that gap on that hyzer angle. And the disc comes out on a little bit of a tighter, tighter line too. You know, it's just a little bit less width to punch through the gap and then it will roll up on its own and start to work from there. So great disc to punch through a gap, easy out of the box roller disc. That's super easy to use and get down on a quick flip roller as well. And just an all around fun disc that I think a lot of players could use. Um, I posted a video talking about giving drivers to beginners. Don't give nine plus speed drivers to brand new players. Um, and some people were saying that this one is a really good friendly driver for, for players seven speed it could easily be considered like a six to me it's kind of in between a uh, fairway and a mid-range but great disc i'm having fun having in my bag and again i'm going to probably get a g star or a star one of these uh very soon to put in my bag as well and then finally you guys are not going to be surprised by this and this might actually piss off a few of you honestly and uh, i'm willing to take the grief for it but my number one disc of the year is the disc golf nerd defiance and it's honestly not even close and before this even became my signature disc, I was already throwing it. I had two other ones that I was already throwing and loving. And since I fell in love with those other ones, that's why it became my signature disc. So whatever, you guys wanna complain or act like I'm just trying to put a commercial in this video. If you think I'm making a ton of money off these, you're wrong. We've only sold you know, so many of them so far, not that many overall, but man just such a fun disc to throw and i've talked about it countless times here on the channel you guys are probably sick of hearing about it so i'll give you the quick rundown it's a 3d printed disc it's shaped like any unlike anything else on the market it is dead flat the rim comes out on this weird angle it's very rounded under here the bottom side of the rim is chunky and also board flat and it fits in my power grip so nice I just love the feel of this thing. This chunky rim just feels great to me. It's kind of a hybrid in between like putter mid-range speed. And then sometimes it'll just decide to go as far as my drivers pretty easily as well. Um, the only thing it's really not great for is windy conditions. Like if it's real windy out there, I'm probably not going to throw it. It gets squirrely in the wind because it has a lot of high speed turn and definitely not head headwinds and stuff. If you want to play a, a right to left, It'll, it'll work great for that, as I uh, just discovered yesterday out there. It's some pretty stiff winds testing and uh, doing a, a practice round and stuff. But what I love about this disc is how hard I can hit it on stiff hyzer and let it pop up and work. 
and other times where I just want it to fly straight all the way, I can do that too. Heiser, pop it up straight, and it'll just go laser straight. But if I commit to it on a lot of Heiser, and especially if I don't flip it up, it's one of those things. It's kind of tricky to explain, but there is a difference between a Heiser flip, Heiser release, and an actual start to finish Heiser release. So if I'm trying to throw this thing on Heiser rather than flipped up from Heiser to flat, you know, and or to whatever angle, if I keep it on Heiser the whole way, it's actually kind of overstable and it will fight in with a nice strong fade. So just an ultra unique, weird disc that doesn't fly or feel like anything else on the market. I love that it's 3D printed, so there's no waste. When you guys order these, they're printed to order and shipped out to you. So they're all basically one of a kind individuals in that way as well. We did them in this clear top, the white back, so that we can dye, you can dye them any color that you want. And just, just being perfectly honest and 100% genuine, this is my favorite disc that came out last year. It's why I chose it as my signature disc and I'm throwing it a ton. Absolutely got more birdies with this disc than any other disc last year. So those are my top three discs and some honorable mentions for 2022. Now that we're in 2023, which is kind of crazy. Um, let me know, what were your favorite discs of the year? Did you test anything that I didn't quite get around to reviewing? Leave me a comment down below. Let me know which one was your favorite. Thank you very much to all of you for your support over the last year or so. I appreciate it very much. The channel's in kind of a weird spot where it feels like we're not growing anymore, but the reviews are okay. There's still a lot of you that care about the channel and the algorithm's super weird with shorts and all the things that are going on. So I really don't know what the future holds here for the channel. We're just gonna keep doing what we're doing and hope for the best. And uh, if you want to help support me and help ensure that the channel continues, the best way to do that is to support my sponsors by Defiance, buy a bag with my code from Upper Park, Disc Golf Nerd 10, or my Patreon is another huge way uh, to, to help support me. A couple bucks a month here and there and uh, really help uh, add up over time and help me kind of get by, pay the bills around here. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all and I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheers.